guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I would like to talk about dependent personality disorder. Okay, so beginning, what even is a personality disorder? So your personality is a way of thinking, feeling, and behaving that makes a person different from others. An individual's personality is influenced by experiences, environment, life situations, and genetics. So, for example, if some, sorry, some people respond to a troubling situation by seeking out help, whereas others prefer to deal with problems on their own. A personality disorder is a rigid way of thinking and behaving that causes someone significant distress. Someone with a personality disorder has problems with their self-concept. And what does that mean? It means the way they think of themselves. Um, trouble relating to other people in healthy ways, so your interpersonal relationships. And troubles with emotional responses, so trouble with emotional regulation. This pattern of experience and behavior begins by late adolescence or early adulthood. This can cause future problems, significant distress, and problems in functioning. Without proper support, personality disorders can be long-lasting. There are 10 specific types of personality disorders, and it is normal to experience traits of any of these 10. Each of the traits or behaviors within these personality, dis personality styles can vary in intensity. It is possible for people to exhibit a number of behavior or traits of a particular personality disorder without being diagnosed. They may meet some criteria for the diagnosis, but not all of the required criteria for a diagnosis. It is also possible to experience traits from a number of personality types. Personality disorders are diagnosed during a thorough psychiatric assessment based on signs and symptoms. So, to be diagnosed with a disorder, you must meet criteria that is listed out of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, which we all know as the DSM-5. That's the latest um, profile, or not profile, sorry, book that the U.S. has made. This manual is published and updated by the American Psychiatric Association and is used by mental health professionals to diagnose mental health conditions. An important fact for you to know is these strategies can become automatic responses to you. It becomes a strategy for you to cope with your emotions during stressful periods. It's like opening a door as a young child. Once you learn that the handle opens the door, you no longer need to pull at hinges. You now know what works for you to get that door open. Your coping strategies have been learned over time, both healthy and unhealthy. Your brain learns quickly what works and what doesn't. Your brain also works quickly to determine the proper response to any given situation. This quick response is very evident during times of distress. Your brain has determined a strategy that works to alleviate stress and anxiety. Your brain will detect stress and anxiety in your body and will offer a suggestion to help with those feelings. Your brain's job is to protect you. So there's a note here and it says, some of the information in this reading may click for you while other parts may not. The purpose of this reading is for you to reflect on your past behaviors and make note of those traits you recognize in yourself. The hope is to help you learn more about yourself and your coping strategies. When you next speak to your treatment team, let them know what you think. It is also important for you to consider when you experience these symptoms, what is happening, who is around, what emotions were you experiencing. And there's this really big blurb of like, bolded letters, so I'm going to read it. It is important for each person to have an open, honest conversation with their treatment team 
successful treatment for personality disorders is possible, and there can be significant decrease in intensity of symptoms. So now we're going to get into, I have traits of dependent personality disorder. I also have traits of histrionic and borderline. So when I get upset, I either go to the histrionic part and I hide all my feelings and I bottle them away, or I go the borderline way and I get angry, I freak out, and it's not good. It's very bad. So my recent visit to the hospital, this is where I got all this information from. I just found out that I have histrionic, dependent, and borderline, as well as my schizophrenia, PTSD, ADHD, and anxiety. So I got a lot going on, but I was kind of happy to hear that personality disorders can be managed, and I really hope that I can manage my personality disorders. So, back to this. What is dependent personality disorder? Dependent personality disorder, or DPD, is one of the most frequently diagnosed personality disorders. It occurs equally in men and women, usually becoming apparent in young adulthood. It can develop later as people form significant adult relationships. Those with DPD are more at risk for developing depression and or anxiety disorders. There is noted high anxiety, nervousness, a need to be taken care of, a need for constant reassurance, and an ability and an inability to make decisions. People with DPD can become emotionally dependent on other people and spend great effort trying to please others. This most often stems from a strong fear conflict, or sorry, strong fear of conflict and or a consistent need for approval. People with dependent personality traits are constantly looking out for the needs of others, can reject their own needs, and have unhealthy boundaries with others. There is another side to dependent personality that occurs when someone becomes so overwhelmed and stressed that they retract and isolate from others. Many times this is due to overwhelming intense emotions and stress and it can feel like you have nothing left and you can no longer cope. So you retract with the hope that someone else will take over and take care of it for you. It is important to note this is not a conscious conscious thought that occurs. Your brain is telling you to act in a certain manner to ease the overwhelming feelings and stress. So, what is the criteria to be diagnosed with DPD? So, difficulty making everyday decisions without an excessive amount of advice and reassurance from others. Needs others to assume responsibility for most major areas of their life has difficulty expressing disagreement with others because of fear of loss of support or approval, has difficulty initiating projects or doing things on their own because of the lack of self-confidence in judgment or abilities rather than a lack of motivation or energy, goes to excessive lengths to obtain reassurance, care and support from others, to the point of volunteering to do things that are unpleasant. Um, feels uncomfortable or helpless when alone because of an exaggerated of because of exaggerated fears of being unable to care for themselves. Urgently seeks another relationship as a source of care and support when a close relationship ends. Is unrealistically preoccupied preoccupied with fears of being left to take care of themselves. So, causes of DPD. Mental health experts haven't figured out specifically what causes DPD. There are studies that suggest that the most common factors are biological or genetic, psychological development, and social, so your environment and your relationships.
Dependent personality is more likely in people with certain life experiences, abusive relationships, childhood trauma, and family history. Those who, have, those who have experienced childhood abuse, this includes verbal and emotional abuse, neglect and trauma may develop dependent personality disorder. It is common for those in, a, in abusive relationships to exhibit signs and symptoms of dependent personality. They learn tactics to not upset anyone or to stay out of the way. They have learned unhealthy boundaries, have significant difficulty with conflict and expressing their thoughts and feelings. Also, someone with a family member who has DPD or an anxiety disorder may be more likely to have this diagnosis. So, why are anxiety disorders and depression higher in people with dependent personality disorder? A lot of symptoms of dependent personality disorder result in someone denying their own needs and emotions. When emotions and needs are denied or not taken care of on a regular basis, our bodies and our minds become unhealthy. For example, if you need to have at least 30 minutes to yourself every day uninterrupted, you can ask for this to be respected. You are fully within your right to ask for what you need. When boundaries are not maintained, you can burn yourself out. So, for example, if you struggle with saying no to others, you could spend all of your time helping others, doing things that you don't actually want to do and not helping yourself. People with DPD also have higher levels of negative thinking and poor self-esteem. This leads to higher levels, in, higher levels of anxiety and low mood, which can lead to depression. This is also noted if you in those who utilize the tactics of isolation, so they retract from the world. When you isolate yourself, you don't get the emotional support and social interactions that you need. You don't take care of your responsibilities and yourself, thus causing more issues. So treatment. Someone with DPD can live an emotionally healthy life if they receive treatment from a mental health provider. Learning new ways to cope with difficult situations can make a difference in overall outlook. People who don't get treatment will be at risk for more severe depression and anxiety. Without treatment, a person may misuse substances, develop problems such as drug addiction or alcoholism, and are more likely to stay un unhealthy and abusive relationships. A mental health provider can help manage symptoms. You can also do psychotherapy, CBT, or cognitive behavioral therapy, and medications can be considered when discussing a treatment plan. It is important to be, it is important for a patient to have a safe, trusting relationship with the therapist. Therapy is a two-way street. The, a therapist is best able to teach you new skills and help you understand your ability to cope when you are open to learning and trying something new. Therapy has shown to increase self-esteem, self-awareness, assertiveness, and usage of proper boundaries. With psychotherapy and CBT, your provider guides you to improve your self-confidence. You'll work to become more active and self-reliant. Your provider will also talk to you about finding more positive relationships. If your symptoms lead to more severe depression or anxiety, your doctor may prescribe medication. It is, it is important to note that while medications can help with some symptoms, it is not the only form of treatment used. When these types of medications are added to a treatment plan, the expectation is that you are involved in therapy as well. Studies have repeatedly shown that there is a higher success rate for patients when therapy is used as well as medication during treatment. Coping and support, it is important for you to consider letting your closest allies, family, friends, etc. in on the progress you make throughout treatment. The more you learn about yourself and how to cope with these symptoms, and more improvement you'll, the more improvement you will notice. This in turn, this will in turn flow into your relationships with others. As you understand yourself, you can teach others about you. Other things you can do to help manage your condition and feel better about yourself include practicing healthy ways to cope with your emotions, working, 
work on self-esteem, assertiveness, and boundaries with your treatment team, practicing and utilizing the techniques taught to you during therapy and treatment. Do things you love. That brings you joy and helps boost your confidence. Um, attend all therapy sessions, get treatment if needed for other concerns, substance abuse, addictive behaviors, relationship counseling, etc. Consider trying journaling. You can reflect on times when you exhibited these symptoms. You will be able to catch things quicker next time. Okay, guys, that was it. Um, thank you so much for listening, and I will catch you guys later. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye.